welcome back to art class. Today we are going to be exploring the element of texture in our art making. Texture is the way something feels or it's the way something looks like it feels in art. So think about a photograph of a dog. Um, if you could pet the dog you could feel its fur but if you're looking at a picture you can only sense what it is through looking at it. Um, we're going to be using things from around the house and creating a rubbing and I'll demonstrate that. So you'll need some peeled crayons in a variety of colors today and you'll also need some things from around the house. Things that you think might have some texture to make a rubbing with. So I've collected some coins. I collected um, some a little branch off my tree outside, my pine tree. Um, this is a f artificial flower that I think might look interesting. Um, bubble wrap is something I'm going to try. I found this net that had, I think, um, nuts in it maybe. So this could really work, but you might notice that all of these things are rather thin. So that's a good way to go. You don't want something that's too bulky or hard. It might be hard to make a rubbing with. I found a Christmas card. It has this raised surface on it, and I think that might work. And I also found a piece of lace, some yarn scraps, a ribbon, and even a piece of cardboard that I peeled off the top of, and made, revealing these ridges. So I want you to pause the video. I want you to collect your supplies. You'll need scissors and glue. You're going to need your broken crayons that are peeled in a variety of colors. You're going to need several sheets of white paper. And if you have some construction paper, you could grab a piece of that to create your collage on. You could also use any kind of scrap paper you have around the house like magazines, newspapers, and things of that sort for your collaging. So go ahead and pause the video, go get a collection of things, and I will meet you right back here. Okay kids, so this is how we do a rubbing. You're going to put the things that you've collected underneath your paper. So let's start out with these coins. If you don't have a lot of coins, that's okay because you can move them around and I'll show you what I mean. Go ahead and put your coins underneath your paper. You're going to want to hold your crayon on its sides like this, like pinching it, and then you're going to lay it down and you're going to rub over the surface. You have to hold your paper down with your other hand. Look at that, that is super cool. You press a little harder, this does take some muscles pressure on these objects in order to reveal their texture. So I can see a little bit of that penny coming through. And I'm just going to move my paper around. You can move the objects or the paper around until you fill up your paper with your rubbing. I'm going to 
gonna set that aside. I'm gonna make another piece of paper. If you have colored paper, this works for colored paper too. You'll just end up with a colored background instead of a white background, and that could be really interesting. You could even do a texture rubbing on some of your scrap papers like this corn tortilla paper that I want to use in my collage. Okay, so I'm going to lay that down the best I can. If it's kind of crumpled, that's okay. And I think I'm going to just try with this black crayon. This is a little harder to find. Oh, there's some petals. I'm really pressing hard in order to make this work. This is also very pretty to just the crayon itself rubbing on the surface of paper makes a nice texture also so really can't go wrong with these rubbings you might think something's gonna look interesting and it doesn't and that doesn't mean you fail that just is it's like an experiment everything is an experiment in art I'm gonna add a layer on top paper a little more complex, a little more going on in that paper. I like the blue and the green. Okay, so I'm going to make one more paper because I want to have four different papers to make my collage with. I just feel like that's going to be a good amount. And I've got a few other textures to go here. I have this netting I'm interested in. So I'm gonna spread that out a little bit. I'm gonna smush it. Hey, let's throw something else in there. Let's throw this ribbon in there. Just see if that gets picked up too. hands so I can do large areas at once. If you can't do a whole piece of paper at once, that's okay. Just do little 
pieces at a time. like the way the net is shaped, but it's really just speckles. Who knew? Put the ribbon back. It's inspiring me um, and, and my ideas for my collage piece. So I want you to be doing that too, looking at your papers and seeing what they might look like. You know what this looks like to me is like a jellyfish. So I think I'm going to make a jellyfish in a green ocean with some bubbles around it, and maybe these will be things that live on the floor. So I'm going to go find a piece of new paper to make my collage on. So meet me back here. Kids, so I've got my paper and I'm decided I'm gonna make a fish and with some bubbles and some shells. Um, that's what I've decided. So I'm gonna draw a fish on my textured paper. I'm just gonna make like a big kind of like a teardrop shape, curve shape, and then I'm gonna do a tail. 
two curved lines out, and then I'm going to make like a wiggly. I'm going to do a couple of those. So, big curve line. Don't close it up. Two arches, and then a wiggly line. So I'm going to make a little family. these out and meet you back here. Cut. Okay, back to the video. All right, so I got my fish cut out. Now I'm gonna add some life that lives on the bottom of the ocean. So I'm gonna do that by cutting out some of these pine branches. cut around a little bit bigger than the shape is. Instead of cutting off the edges, you might want to cut around the shape if you're doing that. It might help show the whole shape still. I really like this flower shape, so I'm going to use that because it reminds me a little bit of a shell. So. Sure, yeah, I'm just arranging things and then I'll make my choices at the end because the next thing I want to add are some of these really cool bubbles. Hmm. So, this is where I'm going to kind of just jump and cut out a grouping of the bubbles. These also look like grapes. You could make a fruit bowl if you have some round shapes or some colors of fruit, you could make a fruit bowl still like that could be fun. Just a gathering, just a little clump of bubbles for my fish family. little ones, little extra ones. Cutting around so I can 
to see the edge of my rubbing. When we make a work of art out of different kinds of materials like paper, just we make our own papers, and we glue them together in a new arrangement, that is called collage. Kind of sounds like college, but it's not the same. Collage. It's one of my favorite art making techniques that I like to do at home in my own work. All right, I think I have enough. My paper is starting to look pretty full. So now I'm going to arrange it. I think I'll have some of my bubbles in front of my fish and some of my bubbles behind my fish. glue it together. So that means I have to glue the things that are on the bottom underneath first, right? So I think I'll start with my plants and my plants. This is underneath. Drop that down. This is underneath too. I'll probably rearrange this a little bit as I go, but that's all right. It's part of the fun to make all these choices. Um, I'm gonna put my big flower shell next. So these are okay where they are, so I'll put those, glue those down. This little fish is free. a collage of someone blowing bubbles if you like this coin bubble look. What are some other ways you could use these round shapes? Maybe create planets or a sidewalk that's made out of pebbles. Too. Now, um, if you feel like it, you could add details using markers or crayons. You could color in areas that you wanted to accentuate, like maybe I'll put a little green to make it look more like an ocean coral, a piece of coral in the ocean. Lines. 
but whatever you do, make it your own. So the main thing is to explore texture by making a rubbing and then taking your handmade papers and creating a collage. And look at all this extra paper I have left. You don't have to stop at one collage. You might go on and create a whole other collage with the papers that you've made. So I hope you have a great time working with uh, rubbings and collage and can make some great textures. Can't wait to see what you come up with, so be sure to um, snap a picture and send it to me be it by email if you'd like to share your, um, your collage with me. Have a super week, and I'll see you next time.